The Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square present a music and the spoken word special to remember and be remembered. Conducting today's program is Matt Wilbur with guest artists, the Wasatch and District Pipe Band, organist Richard Elliott, and the spoken word by Lloyd Newell.
Dale Adams has an unusual hobby, one that has brought meaning and perspective to his life while also honoring those who have gone before. Dale reads and preserves obituaries. As something of a history buff, he discovered an online archive of old newspapers a few years ago. Now he finds obituaries in these newspapers, most from the 19th century, and uploads them to the Family History website FamilySearch.org. It's a quiet act of service for people he doesn't even know, and it creates a more permanent and public record of their lives. Many times he has found that the obituary noting a person's death was the only documented trace that he or she ever lived. It's the saddest thing in the world to go to somebody's site and uh, conclude that you're the only person that's probably ever visited that site. That shouldn't happen to anybody. Again, it gives me a warm feeling to add something to somebody's site that uh, otherwise has little on it. It's a little bit like taking an artificial flower and placing it on a per person's grave. So Dale is trying to change that. So far, he has uploaded around 30,000 obituaries and counting. In fact, the pandemic gave him time to increase his pace. And to his surprise, Dale has learned that he's performing a service not just for the deceased, but also for their descendants. I get uh, a telephone call or an email message several times a week. Uh, often by people who see that I've added something to one of their ancestor sites and assume that I'm a close relative. And they're hoping that I've got additional pictures and can direct them in ways that uh, can provide more information. And they'll end up talking to me for an hour. And you can tell that those people are just desperately lonely. Dale's simple act of service has shown that we all long to connect, to remember and be remembered. And in that sense, none of us is truly alone. Have you ever noticed how we tend to think about a person's life differently after he or she is gone? Suddenly, things that seem so urgent, so important, seem to fade in time. For example, our obituaries will probably not list how much money we made, the size of our house, or what kind of car we drove. Instead, what remains, what lasts in the memory of our loved ones is the way we've lived our lives, the people we've helped, the service we've given, and the love we've shown. 
My family will often sit around and talk about all our funny family memories growing up. We'll laugh and we'll laugh and just enjoy remembering. The older I get, the more I appreciate it. Learning about those who have gone before me, I feel grateful for my parents, my grandparents, and my extended family. I think often of them, and I remember them. I love going to the cemetery to put flowers on the graves of my loved ones. When I was younger, I didn't think it was important, but now, I, I, it really helps me to remember them and to talk to my children about them. Some of the blessings that we have today wouldn't be possible without the people in our family history.
Thank you for joining the Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square for this Memorial Day special, originating from historic Temple Square in Salt Lake City. Please join us again for music and the spoken word. Until we meet again, may peace be with you this day and always. Two.